Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Katie Rowley. I'm with the NOAA Central Library. We are very excited to be bringing this talk today by Noelle Olson, um, Understanding Motivations and Economic Contributions of Coral Reef Related Recreation and Coral Reef Health to Hawaii by Divers and Snorkelers. Um, as a uh, little housekeeping if you have a question please place that in the question panel we're holding all the questions until the end of the talk if you are having any audio issues uh, i would please ask that you log out and log back in um, and that should solve any audio visual um, issues you may have if you are still having a persistent problem, uh, please chat at me and I will try and troubleshoot that for you. Um, and without further ado, I will turn it over to Noelle. Awesome. Uh, hello and thank you all for joining me this afternoon for the folks in the lower 48 and good morning to those joining from the Hawaiian Islands. Uh, I joined this project midway through, so I just want to thank my co-authors, uh, Sabrina Lovell, Christy Walmo and Mariska Weiderman. Um, and there's a couple of people that have floated in and out of this project over the past couple of years. I was originally supposed to present this research at a conference last month in Hawaii and do a, do a seminar for the Pacific Islands Fishery Science Center, but some things came up. So I also wanted to take some time to thank the NOAA Central Library for being able to host this webinar today. And not that anyone asked, but I am wearing my best Aloha shirt for this presentation. All right, this study fits into the goals of the NOAA Coral Reef Conservation Program, the National Coral Reef Monitoring Plan, and the Pacific Islands Fishery Science Center. Oop, wrong direction. Estimates of the impacts of reefs and their contribution to Hawaii's economy can help our understanding of how coral reefs support Hawaiian communities. This research can help inform coastal resource management to support agency managers and lawmakers and prioritize conservation and research needs. The implementation of this research will help establish a baseline for future economic studies of Hawaii's coral reef ecosystems. This online survey was open June 2018 to July 2019 and was pre-tested with two focus groups in Honolulu in April of 2018. And the survey was distributed using a variety of methods. First, we had the mail pushed to web. Uh, there were 500 postcards with the survey link that were randomly distributed to Hawaiian households and the amount sent to each the amounts sent out were proportional to the population size of the seven main Hawaiian islands. In person, there were about 250 or 2,500 postcards that were distributed at airports and dive shops on Oahu, Maui, and Hawaii, and the Big Island of Hawaii, and also at the 2018 Hawaii Fish and Dive Expo. Also, the there were online announcements. Uh, the survey link was shared via NOAA websites, email listservs, and social media groups and pages like for dive shops. And the image on the right is the mock-up of the postcard that was sent out. If anyone finds themselves in Silver Spring, we have quite a few uh, postcards that sort of have a typo in them if anyone is interested. And next I'm going to show you a video that was um, available on the website that hosted the survey. NOAA is conducting a survey to determine the economic impacts of Hawaii's coral reefs. You can help by taking a few minutes to complete the survey. Divers and snorkelers know how important coral reefs are. They spend lots of money to experience the underwater world, creating jobs and sales for Hawaii. But how much of an economic impact do reefs really have, and why should we care? Information gained from this survey can help answer this question and help decision makers prioritize coral reef management and research make a difference. If you've been diving or snorkeling in Hawaii in the last year, please take the survey. Your information could help protect Hawaii's coral reefs and help NOAA sustainably manage our nation's marine resources. Please visit our website for more information and to take the survey.
I just wanted to note that the survey was based on whether participants had gone snorkeling or diving on a coral reef area in Hawaii in the past 12 months prior to taking the survey. And so if they had not gone on a snorkel or a dive trip, then they were sent to the end of the survey, um, but they could leave a comment if they wanted to and answer a couple of the demographic questions um, included. So the survey contained, like I just mentioned, de some demographic information about the participants, uh, questions about diver and snorkeler behaviors and opinions, questions asked about the participants' last dive or snorkel trip, um, also about the condition of the coral reef ecosystems and the amount spent in Hawaii on durable goods and how much they spent on their last dive or snorkel trip. And lastly, there is a section for open-ended comments. So when we're thinking about the different groups of people who are participating in coral reef activities, we can expect that different types of people will have different use patterns, differing opinions about the health of the reefs, different levels of experience with reefs and diving, um, and different types of spending patterns related to reef activities. So when we're talking about our survey, our survey who are we thinking about? So we have the residents of Hawaii, and we also have the non-residents of Hawaii or the visitors to the state. And you'll see uh, Lilo and Stitch throughout my presentation to help orient you to the different graphs that I'll be showing. We also have different types of activities included. So we have Bob and snorkelers coming in hot. And I've heard that large groups of snorkelers are called noodle soup because there'll be a big group of people with um, floaties hanging around in the water. We have scuba divers descending into the reefs and the ever graceful free divers. Uh, we can also think about the mode in which they took their trips. Um, so we have people coming in from the shore, taking charter boats and taking private or rented boats. Um, but today this talk will mostly focus on comparing uh, residents and non-residents. Respondents were asked the name of the beach or reef site where they last where they last went diving or snorkeling. In this map, we have blue circles representing residents and orange circles representing visitors. The size of the circle increases with the number of respondents that selected that reef site for their last trip. And this represents a total of 437 of about 800 uh, dive locations. Some sites were not able to be mapped because this question um, was an open-ended answer so people could type whatever they wanted. Um, so we had a large variety of English names, some Hawaiian names, some nicknames for sites, and some people just didn't want to share where they were diving, so they said like two miles past this barge. And just uh, wanted to clarify that this map shows data for both residents and visitors and includes all types of diving and snorkeling and from all different modes. And just to orient you to some of the more popular reef sites from the survey, we have Poipu Beach and Kauai, Sharks Cove, Electric Beach and Hanama Bay in Oahu, uh, Molokini in Maui, and Two Step on the Big Island. So based on some of the demographic results, we had 572 residents and 237 visitors uh, that participated. The mean age for both groups was about 50 years old. Um, and then the generation, gender ratio from the survey was about 50-50 for both groups. Um, residents were asked which island they live on. Um, so this bar graph on the y-axis shows percent. And we can see um, a majority of the residents were on Oahu, which makes sense because that's where the Science Center and Regional Office are located. So we had 58% on Oahu. 22% on the Big Island and 13% on Maui. Um, for This is the first in a series of questions related to diver and snorkeler opinions and behaviors. Um, participants were asked to rate the importance of a series of items in their decision to go diving or snorkeling um, from non-important to very important. Uh, because both residents and visitors end up rating these items similarly for many of the categories uh, I end up plotting them together. So the items they were rating are found on the left axis and the um, percent 
scales are found on the bottom axis. And just to note, each data bar represents 100%. So I included the value for the most common answer for each of the different categories. And these, um, this question is sort of based on a previous uh, dive preference study that was conducted in Guam by some folks from the Pacific Islands. So based on these results, seeing an abundance of healthy coral, seeing an abundance of fish and a wide diversity of fish uh, across the board for both residents and visitors were rated as very important. Um, the category that ended up having the highest difference between residents and visitor responses was spear fishing. 24% of residents said spear fishing was important or very important um, compared to only 2% of visitors rated spear fishing as either important or very important. And the category with the second highest differences between residents and visitors was seeing sea turtles. Um, there wasn't a huge difference between the ratings between residents and visitors. Um, I think this is a matter of residents of Hawaii see sea turtles so often um, that maybe they aren't as excited because they're more used to it and they're spoiled with the, the sea life down there compared to a visitor coming to Hawaii for the first time. Respondents were then asked to think about the conditions of their reefs and choose an image that best represents what they saw on their last dive or snorkel. So first, respondents were asked about the amount of healthy coral seen um, and given these images to help with their answer. So rating the amount of healthy coral from low to high, and there's also an option for did not see or unsure. Um, this is a similar uh, graph to as before. So we got the different categories, residents and visitors on the left axis, and then the percent spread on the bottom axis. Um, and again, these bars add up to 100%. So when you look at the medium ranking category, both residents and visitors answered similarly. Um, but when you look at the high category or high amount of healthy coral, uh, visitors ended up rating the amount of healthy coral higher than the residents. And looking at the low category, sort of a similar pattern, overall residents rated the amount of healthy corals lower than the visitors did. Uh, next, respondents were asked about the number of fish number of fish seen on the last time they went snorkeling or diving and given these images to help with their answers. So for the number of fish, looking at residents and visitors, this medium category, um, again, residents and visitors answered similarly, um, about 60%. Again, for the high category, visitors ended up ranking the number of fish higher than the residents did. And it's seen, again, with looking at the low category. And lastly, the respondents were asked about the variety of fish seen and given these images to help with their answer. All right, no surprise, uh, the medium category is again around 60% for both residents and visitors. Uh, the high category does not have as big of a difference between the two groups of people, but visitors still rated the variety of fish um, higher than the residents and also, um, looking at the low category, again, residents rated the fish variety lower than the um, visitors did. And kind of with these three plots, um, you know, visitors might not be as familiar with what a quote unquote healthy coral reef would look like um, in Hawaii. Um, they might not be as familiar with the different species, so they might not be able to recognize all the different types or if there's the male fish look different than the female fish. Maybe they'd overcount that. Um, all right. So as we just saw, participants were asked to think about the conditions of the reef on their last dive or snorkel trip. Uh, this next question asked to rate how the following changes um, would influence their decision to go diving or snorkeling again in the future. 
And so the categories for this were, or the answers were, you'd be less likely to go diving again in the future, wouldn't change, or you'd be more likely to go diving again in the future. Um, and the left axis has the different potential changes that survey respondents were taking into consideration. The dashed line splits the potential changes and conditions into two categories. Uh, positive changes in the top, like healthier coral reefs, um, more fish and sea turtles, and with having um, the negative changes in reef conditions on the bottom, which includes decline in healthy coral, number of fish, or number of sea turtles. Again, each of these bars add up to 100%. Um, and I included the value for the most common answer for each category. And this combines um, both resident and visitor data. So overall, both residents and visitors said that they were more likely to go diving or snorkeling again in the future if reef conditions were to increase, which should hopefully inspire um, some conservation measures because you know that people want to see um, healthier reefs and they're more likely to be out about in the water um, if reefs were to get healthier. The opposite is also mostly seen when you look at the bottom half of the conditions related to decreases in uh, reef condition. And this is especially important to know for environmental and state managers um, because if people are less likely to go diving again if conditions were to get worse or if coral bleaching events um, were to become more severe, then that would mean there'd be less ecotourism and less money uh, generated for Hawaii. And some of you may be wondering why there would be some people who would choose or who would say that they'd be more likely to go snorkeling or diving again if reef conditions were to decrease. And one of the open-ended comments um, specifically mentioned this question so that the wording was a little confusing. Um, and people might, you know, enter the first couple categories and say, oh, I know this pattern. Like, yes, I would be more likely to go diving no matter what. Um, so they could have maybe missed the change in wording. And for um, this plot, although both residents and visitors rated things similarly. Uh, the category with the biggest differences between residents and visitors was for seeing large fish sighting or changes in large, large fish sightings. Um, based on some of the anecdotes from the comment section, some residents expressed that they weren't necessarily interested in seeing large trophy fish, but rather those who subsistence fish are more interested in seeing more native species, less invasives, um, and being able to feed their families with their catch without having to travel too far from the shore. And the category with the second amount of differences between residents and visitors was seeing sea turtles again. Um, again, it wasn't as big of a difference between the two categories, but I think residents being more familiar with sea turtles or more used to having turtle sightings, um, they're not as influenced by changes in potential turtle sightings. Right. Respondents were asked how often they have done the following behaviors when planning a dive or snorkel trip, um, rating them from never, rarely, occasionally, often, and usually found on the bottom. And the different behaviors are listed on the left axis. So the two behaviors that people were most like or reported that they were most likely having done were um, the top bar, go later or earlier in the day, um, and then the bottom bar, avoid crowded reef sites. So for um, going later early in day, um, looking at occasionally, often, or usually, um, it was about 74% of respondents said that they have done this at least occasionally. And for the bottom, um, 69% said that they have at least occasionally avoided crowded reef sites. And people, especially people who are visiting Hawaii, um, you know, they're generally more limited with their time. Um, they have less flexibility with, you know, which days they can take their charters or go, go snorkeling. So some of these answers, they might not be able to change. So if they're only visiting on a weekend, you know, they wouldn't be able to take trips just on the weekdays. Um, or thinking about Hawaii residents, if they work full time, they might not actually be able to go 
later or earlier day, just depending on their schedules. And the reason for including this question um, in the survey was because there's been um, account or people have expressed that there's been conflict between residential fishers and tourists. Um, residential fishers have expressed feeling overcrowded at their uh, sort of traditional fishing spots and might need to find other fishing spots um, to get the fish that they want. And so we were interested in seeing how people have responded to crowded beaches. So it's in, it's good in terms of mitigating user conflict that divers and snorkelers have already implemented behavioral changes in the past to potentially avoid crowded reefs and managers might be able to use that bit of information thinking to the future if there needed to be um, some user uh, to dispel some user conflicts. So another type of data we collected in the survey was um, expenditures related to diving and snorkeling. So there's two main categories. Uh, we have durable good expenditures, which refers to items purchased in Hawaii, in Hawaii, mainly for the purposes of snorkeling and diving. Uh, this includes items like camera equipment, coolers, fins, snorkel, sunscreen, um, flotation devices, dive computers. And the second category of expenditures includes trip expenditures, and this refers to expenses incurred by divers and snorkelers on a dive or snorkel trip, and they're calculated on a per night or per day of snorkeling or diving. And some of the examples for this include airfare, lodging, equipment rental, boat fuel, um, car rental, site access fees, food and beverages. So this slide shows the mean durable good expenditures over the past 12 months. Um, on the y-axis, we have the different expenditure categories. Um, and then on the x-axis, we have the mean amount spent um, per respondent. Um, and this data is split out between visitors and residents. So if you were to total all the bars in the graph, you would get that mean durable goods value over here in this teal. Um, so about a mean expenditure of $226 per visitor and $853 per resident. And as expected, residents spent more because you would imagine that visitors would try and rent thing, heavy gear like scuba um, equipment, and hopefully only have to buy a bathing suit because it was cute rather than because you forgot to pack one um, before you left. Um, these are the mean trip level expenditures uh, for per dive or snorkel day. So these are based on the respondent's last dive or snorkel trip. Again, these are split out between visitors and residents. Um, so the y-axis has the different expenditure categories, and this time the x-axis um, is mean dollars spent per day. Um, so things like lodging get divided by the number of nights spent away, um, and things like gear rental gets divided by the number of days diving. The biggest categories for visitors um, were lodging and airfare and charter fees. Um, there are still some residents who had lodging and airfare, so that means that they had gone to a different Hawaiian island to go diving. And the two biggest categories for residents were um, food and beverages and charter fees. And again, if you were to total up all these values, um, the mean trip expenditures for visitors were $413 and $173 per resident. From the calculated mean durable expenditures, um, we can conduct an economic impact analysis. Economic impact models trace the flow of expenditures through a community and show the distribution of impacts between industries, households, and governments. And three of the economic impacts I'm going to show today include employment, um, which refers to both full and part-time jobs, 
value added, which is the labor income and profits supported by dive and snorkel expenditures, and total output, which is the gross value of sales by businesses within the economic region. So in this case, within the state of Hawaii. So we took the value of the mean trip expenditures per dive and snor or dive or snorkel trip and use them to create an economic impact model for the state of Hawaii uh, using a software called Implan. And the model or these val the model estimates that these values um, these values are scaled up to 1,000 uh, resident and 1,000 visitor dive snorkel trips. So originally we calculated per trip and then using this model, we're able to say, hey, if we had a total of 1,000 residents and 1,000 visitors going on a trip, how much, um, how many impacts are we able to gain from using this data? So looking at both residents and visitors, um, the money spent or the expenditure spent um, could support six full or part-time jobs. Um, it could support a total um, of val total value added of about four hundred eighty six thousand dollars, and a total output or sales of about seven hundred eighty five thousand dollars. And as now, as of now, the total number of dive and snorkel trips is an unknown number. But if we had that magic number, then we could run the economic impact model to estimate the total number of economic impacts per year for all of Hawaii. So right now we're limiting it just to a potential 1,000 dive trips or snorkel trips. And what's cool about this survey is that some of the results have already been incorporated into an end-to-end -end Atlantis model um, for the Hawaiian Islands. Um, and this is based on ecosystem-based fisheries management. Um, and this model is run by colleagues at the Pacific Islands Fishery Science Center. And for those of you not familiar, I'm going to use the NOAA, NOAA definition of ecosystem-based fisheries management. It is a holistic approach that recognizes all interactions within an ecosystem rather than considering a single species or issue in isolation with the goal of maintaining ecosystems in a healthy, productive, and resilient condition so they can provide the services humans want and need. So in this case, diving and snorkeling provide tourism and recreation services and are typically non-extractive. Although if people go um, free diving and spear fishing, then of course that means they're taking some fish out for food. This is an infographic explaining or showing what the EBFM model is all about. Um, so the different colors represent the different submodels that are incorporate that incorporate many many databases, which can ultimately lead to management help support management decisions in the Pacific Islands. So starting from the right, we have the hydrographic submodel um, includes data on biogeochemistry and climate and oceanography. Then moving over, we have the ecological submodel that includes data on food web interactions and habitat. And lastly, all the way to the left, we have the human uses submodel. Um, which looks at commercial and non-commercial uses. Um, so for the case of Hawaii, non-commercial fishing uh, is defined by subs subsistence, traditional indigenous, and recreational fishing. And also, the socioeconomic interactions come from uh, snorkeling and diving. All right, this figure um, based on the Atlantis model was created by Amanda Dillon with um, Pacific Islands Fishery Science Center. So Pacific, specifically talking about the socioeconomic interactions, there's an indicator in the Atlantis model, um, which includes, or it's called uh, dive enjoyment. And in this case, dive means uh, both snorkeling and diving. So this is one of the indicators of the non-extractive use of this ecosystem. And the value of this indicator is calculated based on the questions that I mentioned earlier when uh, participants were supposed to rate how important was seeing healthy coral reefs, a lot of fish, sea turtles, um, and the diversity of fish. 
And this indicator was developed by Zach Oyofuso, who was a PhD student, PhD student at University of Hawaii at Manoa and is now an NRC fellow. So under different management simulations, um, the ecosystem state components will likely change, leading to a change in the dive enjoyment indicator. And in the future, the economic impacts of these non-extracted activities will be used as another indicator in the Atlantis model, which we can compare um, among different management actions. So if a management action were to be proposed or to change, um, we can look at how the economic impacts will have an effect on it. Uh, so this continues to be a work in progress. Um, so some of the next steps include continue working on the economic impact analyses to add to the Atlantis model, uh, publishing the results in a NOAA technical memorandum, um, comparing results to a similar economic impact NOAA study being done on Florida cor coral reefs led by uh, Chrissy Walmo, and hopefully be able to apply results and methodology to other Pacific Island reef systems. There's a huge list of people that have helped with this project over the past couple years, um, from participating in the focus groups to distributing the survey, um, to working on the different parts of the model, all the way to helping me with my code and some of my graphics. If anyone was at the Ocean Sciences meeting this year, I had presented a poster on this. And with that, I'll take any questions. Thank you so much, Noelle. We do have a few questions that popped up during your talk, but if um, anyone has a question, now is the time to place that in the chat question panel. And I'm gonna start off with our first question that was um, asked early on. Uh, will you share the information with the public? Since the survey link was widely publicized, it's always great for the public to know that their answers were useful and find out the results of the survey. Yes, so being able to work with the staff at the Science Center, um, there were actually a couple comments on the survey itself from participants that they really wanted to know um, how this data was gonna be used. I think working with the comms team there will be really helpful. Um, and also it was good to see in the comment section that there were quite a few people that were interested in ways to volunteer and potentially help um, improve reef, reef health. So that was also good to see. Great, thank you. Uh, next question. How do you balance the dollar value of the activities against overcrowding and impacts to reefs at points where the activities may not be sustainable and start to degrade the value of the activities? I would say that I think using the Atlantis model can help um, kind of compare and contrast different management actions and you know, I know for uh, the recent coral bleaching events happening in the Hawaiian Islands, um, there have been some beaches recommended to be closed or people are um, advised against going in at certain times. So I think just trying to figure out that balance, but using the result, the economic results from the survey um, should be able to help with management decisions. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question. How many surveys uh, were completed for residents and visitors? So it was about, I think, 500, um, 500 so odd residents and almost 200 visitors. Okay, thank you. Next question. Airfare expenditures and some portion of hotel expenses do not add to local economy. Were local slash distant economic impacts separated? Um, do you mind repeating the question? Yes, no problem. Airfare expenditures and some portion of hotel expenses do not add to the local economy. Were local slash distant economic impacts separated? I wonder if this question came from an economist. Um, so I would say that 
technically, yes. Um, so the expenditures related to things like lodging and airfare um, might be seen as slightly higher over estimates because people, unless the person only went to Hawaii to go for the purpose of diving and snorkeling, um, then you'd be um, kind of saying more money was contributed to diving than maybe it was in reality. Okay, this is Sabrina Love. I'll just jump in here. Um, so when we do the airfare, we only count like in terms of the impacts, the in-plan model only counts 50% of the airfare to the um, state of Hawaii because we realized half of that would have been from where they came from. And then for the lodging, we don't ask questions about lodging on the way to Hawaii, only the lodging expenditures in Hawaii, if that helps. Thank you. Okay, next question. Are there any plans to go beyond survey of preferences to assess willingness to pay for certain ecosystem service characteristics? Mm -hmm. So do you mind repeating that again? Yep, no problem. Okay, are there any plans to go beyond uh, a survey of preferences to assess willingness to pay for certain ecosystem service characteristics? Uh, I'm not sure the at least for the scope of this survey um, because we've already completed it it won't be included um, that's right we don't have um, any plans at, at the moment to do a willingness to pay survey um, for ecosystem services in Hawaii it's certainly something worth considering if, if people are interested but at the moment we don't have any specific plans to do that thank you Sabrina uh, next question. Do residents and visitors dive in different places? Any insight into how groups are sorting? How can this dive management, uh, how can this, uh, how can this drive management decisions? Yeah, well, it's actually funny. So if people are familiar with Hanama Bay, it's a really, really popular dive site in Oahu. Um, but because there were more residents that filled out the survey, I think it was like, 18 residents said that they went to Hanama Bay versus only two visitors that went. Um, so unfortunately we are missing some of the data because we just couldn't actually um, map out where everyone was diving. Um, but now that we do have this list, it's a great start to kind of figure out hotspots. Um, but I'm sure you know local people and local agency managers are already kind of familiar with where the most popular sites are based on where the charter boats are going. Great, thank you. Uh, next question. On the last slide prior to your next steps, it was mentioned that management would be imposed on fishing effort, which translates to increased biomass and better reefs for a more enjoyable dive experience. Was there any data leading to better understanding of impacts from those non-extractive uses on the health of the reef? Um, I might ask Mariska if you have. I, I think um, it seemed that Noel was just giving an example of a management option which could lead to more biomass. It's not that we have imposed any man management decisions. I mean, we're not doing that. So the Atlantis model is um, to show the trade offs between ecological and economic impacts. And for um, so ecological impacts would be you know the state components of the of the reef and that could lead to non-extractive um, indicators like this dive enjoyment we um, we made up. Um, but of course for dive management strategies we need to talk to the manager as well. What are the strategies you would like to or you're thinking about imposing, and then we can run that through the model and then see what all the cost benefits are or the, the trade-offs between the economic and ecological impacts. Does that answer the question? Uh, yes. They are happy with that answer. Okay, I will move on to the next question. Uh, do you think some of the folks that answered a reduction in healthy coral would increase their likelihood of going on a dive could mean 
They are concerned that the reefs are disappearing and want to get those dives in while there are still corals to see. Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. Um, you know, people didn't write kind of their reasoning. Um, so from our point of view, we can only sort of make assumptions with the data that we were given. Great, thank you. Uh, next question. Were sharks grouped into the big fish categories in perception questions? And do you think that responses about big fish presence on reefs were affected by the public's general negative perceptions about sharks? So sharks weren't specifically called out in the survey. Um, the only other kind of verbiage that was included was referring to a large fish as being bigger than 50 centimeters or 20 inches. So in theory, a shark could be included in that, but the word shark was never specifically added. And I can add to that, that we did, um, we did a, an, um, a survey in Guam where we looked at uh, what divers or snorkelers like to see, and there we did include sharks. And the results there were, um, that if experienced divers, they would they like to see sharks, whereas inexperienced divers or snorkelers, they are afraid of sharks. So a bit of a mix. Great, thank you. Our next question is: uh, How did you define a resident? Did they do they have to live in Hawaii a minimum number of months of the year? It wasn't specifically designed so or um designated how long you had to be there uh, so i can imagine that some people you know live there three months of the year um so it's kind of a self-declared resident of hawaii okay thank you uh next question diving can also have negative impacts uh fuel spills diver coral impacts disturbance to megafauna etc um, is there a way to account for these um in the model in the model there is no way to account for that no we just is we just look at this dive enjoyment as an indicator mm -hmm. and then of course the economic impacts okay thank you if uh the questioner would like to clarify they can uh put something back into the question panel but i'm going to move on to the next one uh next question would this core survey instrument be the one also given to the other Pacific Islands jurisdictions? This is Sabrina. Um, so this was funded out of the Science Center and headquarters in partnership with the Pacific Islands Fishery Science Center. Um, and if uh, we wanted to expand it, I think it would depend on what the Pacific Islands Fishery Science Center staff would, would like to do. We can certainly start with this survey and then modify it however they see fit. Um, so it doesn't have to be exactly the way it is now. It could be modified to fit those other places. Great, thank you. Okay, next question. Would it be possible to get information on the number of dives for a year to get a more accurate estimate of value over a year? Yes, yeah, so there, um, there's sort of two sources you could look at. So you can kind of use the number of dives that people reported that they did per year and kind of think of, look at um, the use census data to estimate kind of a total potential population of potential divers. Um, it would still very much be an estimate. Um, there's another data source um, for visitors uh, Hawaii has a big tourism and recreation survey. Um, so anyone that flies or cruises into Hawaii is asked um, some about the activities that they did. Um, so that could be a potential data source for calculating total of dives um, done by visitors. Great, thank you. Uh, next question. Was there any thought of including the cost benefit trade offs of the collection and sales of marine fish and invertebrates for the marine aquaria trade? If I'm not mistaken, I think the aquarium trade is closed now. And um, 
So we did not include that. Thank you, Mariska. Okay, next question. Uh, you showed several slides of monk seals. As a protected and endangered species, how do they factor into the diving, the recreational diving situation? They could be a target animal, but also a risk of disturbance. Yes, yeah, so the photos of the monk seals um, were kind of just cute add-ons to the slides. Um, the survey doesn't touch on seeing protected species other than seeing sea turtles. Um, so no one was specifically asked about the marine mammals in the area other than turtles. Great, thank you. The next question. Um, are you familiar with the National Coral Reef Monitoring Program socioeconomic surveys? These surveys only survey residents, not visitors, but I'm wondering if there are any synergies between this work and the surveys done by the monitoring program. This is Sabrina. Yes, um, we are aware of that, and I've actually been um, talking a lot with that program and giving them some um, thoughts about what we did and what they might want to do. So yeah, we um, have been working somewhat together. Thank you. Um, our, the question about the aquaria, the uh, questioner has responded that the uh, marine aquaria trade is back open. Okay, I didn't know that. And from what I can see, we do not have any more questions. Is there anything um, else, Noel, Mariska, or Sabrina, you would like to add? Um, I just add that this was um, a really interesting survey to conduct. It was a little bit challenging because we didn't have a specific sample frame of snorkelers and divers, um, so it's kind of hard to find them with a general household frame. Um, but I think it came out pretty well given that, and I really uh, would like to thank all the people at the Science Center in Hawaii that helped out with various parts of this and um, all the people here in headquarters and, and Noel for analyzing all the data and, and giving a great talk. Thanks. Okay, wonderful, everyone. I uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, this has been recorded and it will be posted on the library's YouTube channel. Noelle, will you be offering links to this presentation and your poster? Or could you offer those? Yes, just with the disclaimer that um, these results are still considered preliminary until we publish the tech memo. Wonderful. And with that, thank you everyone for joining us. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your evening or the day ahead on the West Coast. Yes, thank you everyone. And thanks, Katie.